Could science create Frankenstein? Well, absolutely. If there isn't one already, just find a random person with the name, give them an honorary doctorate in biology, and boom! That's Dr. Frankenstein. Though you don't think you could watch some nerdy video about Frankenstein without the obligatory pedantic comments that Frankenstein is the scientist and his creation is just called the monster. Did you? Did you click on the video just to be like, Simon's gonna be dumb, he's gonna get it wrong? No, we never get things wrong. We are perfect. With that out of the way, let's talk about Frankenstein's monster and whether or not this is actually possible. To start, there are a lot of different depictions of the monster and how it was created in various stories and movies, and we're not going to bother discussing every slight variation as the central theme remains the same. And I'd actually like you to watch this video rather than being like, this is a boring exploration of literature and I'm out! No! Let's go. How Frankenstein Did It In the original book, Frankenstein's process for creating the monster is rather vague, but also overly ambitious. The monster is assembled from various body parts from different people. However, it was not as simple as just stitching a new arm and head onto a torso. Frankenstein robbed charnel houses, vaults that are used to store human bones, normally ones that were dug up while digging graves. But that's it. Only bones are stored in those things, not entire bodies. For all the fleshy bits, he was going to have to get a bit creative. He used a combination of parts from dissecting rooms and a slaughterhouse, which meant that the entire monster wasn't even composed of human pieces. It was also almost certainly made up of lots of very small pieces, something that would make the already difficult process far more difficult than it needed to be. However, Frankenstein still thought through this process. He constructed the body to be eight feet tall because there are a lot of small nerves and other things that need to be connected, so the larger the body, the easier it would be for him to see everything that he needed to do, because that's how how biology works. <laughs> Using the book as our example, this is already falling well outside of the scope of reality. Surprise! <laughs> Even worse was the process for bringing the monster back to life. The actual process is not described in detail, but it did not involve lightning bolts. It did, however, involve magic. Or more specifically, alchemy. Oh wait, no, it's not real. It's not real. It's magic. Frankenstein claimed that he had discovered a new elemental force that he could use to create life. So, looking at the book, it would appear to be clearly impossible. That's not surprising, since it was written as a fiction book well over 200 years ago. But what about more recent adaptations and movies? When we think of Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster. No one is thinking of a creature that's mostly leftover pork and beef that's been glued onto a human skeleton. The version of the monster most people think of is Lon Chini Jr. from the 1931 film. In this iteration, rather than just stealing human bones, Frankenstein steals entire bodies or at least body parts from the cemetery. What we get instead is certainly a lot simpler. It has a torso with arms and legs sewn onto it, a head sewn on, and a separate brain that was not part of the original head. This is already exponentially more realistic. The monster is also animated by harnessing the electrical power of a lightning bolt. Now, this isn't actually any more realistic than, well, using magic or alchemy, but at least they tried to make it seem vaguely plausible. Unfortunately, despite major improvements, this version still isn't any more possible, as you probably know, because there's not Frankenstein's monsters walking around. So is that it then? Is creating some sort of Frankenstein's monster absolutely impossible and we should just give up? Well, yeah, you should probably give up because it's unlikely to work out any better for you, your creation, or the villagers than it did in the story. But that doesn't actually mean that it's impossible. How we would do it. They say it takes a village. In the story, it took a village to torment Frankenstein's monster and drive him to suicide, but for us, it would take an entire village to create it. Step number one, we need some body parts, and none of that grave robbing bullshit. We could say that, well, that is illegal and it's immoral, but given our goal here, this argument doesn't really hold any weight. The real issue is freshness. If this is taking place in the United States, any bodies that were buried are almost certainly embalmed. Any embalmed body parts would be absolutely useless for our purposes, and the process would destroy their viability. Even if they weren't, there's still the issue of decay. Human bodies start to decay very quickly, so time is of the essence. If the bodies are being refrigerated in a morgue, it will slow down the decomposition process to buy some time, but it's not going to stop it. It's also important that the body parts remain a couple of degrees above freezing, as freezing the cells will cause the water to crystallize and destroy the cell membranes, making them useless. This means that all of the body parts we need need to come from fresh corpses. This is turning into an episode of The Casual Criminalist. Don't 
do this. However, just being fresh isn't enough. If you're stitching different limbs onto a torso, you're going to need two legs that are exactly the same length, and same with the arms. You'll also need to ensure that the blood types of all of these bodies are compatible. Same with the organs that you replace, though for simplicity's sake, it's probably best to just use a torso full of healthy organs. Healthy other than the fact that the host of these organs is dead, of course. So far, all of this remains theoretically possible, though it would require a certain level of really good organization and also just a dashing of psychopathy. After all, where exactly are you getting all of these perfectly matched bodies that died at the same time and in the same place? Unless there was some tragic disaster that would free up the perfect assortment of bodies, it would almost certainly require the coordinated murders of several people just to create some sort of abominable crime era. You sicko. Psychopathy notwithstanding, we are able to perform limb transfers. Reattaching a severed limb is easy, but complete transfers are possible and they do happen. There tends to be a lack of feeling in the transplanted limbs, at least in the short term, but that works out perfectly for us. The lack of feeling could result in the shambling Frankenstein vibe that we all love so much. The monster probably wouldn't just hold its arms outstretched, though, because that'd just be weird. That's just fiction. However, reattaching or transplanting a limb is a complex, time-consuming, and time-sensitive issue. These surgeries can take 8 to 10 hours or more because there are so many tiny parts that would need to be reconnected. All the surgeries would also be taking place at the same time because they'd be fighting against the clock that is decomposition. When all that is said and done, it would probably take a team of 30 or more surgeons to handle everything that is required. And that's a lot of surgeons, especially if they all have to be murderous psychopaths and coordinate their efforts. So far, this is all rather challenging, but it is theoretically doable. Even if we were to swap out organs from other bodies into the monster's torso, organ transplants are absolutely possible, so that doesn't create any serious issue other than further complicating the already crowded operating room. The real issue in assembling a monster comes from the head and the potential brain transplant. This has proven all but impossible so far. There have been many attempts at head transplants in animals. One mad scientist, often referred to as the real Dr. Frankenstein, has performed over 1,000 head transplants on mice, as well as other abominations. To date, no head transplant has been successful, and the results have, uh, well, they've been horrific. The best case scenario for the test subjects is death. They undergo the surgery, and they never wake up. None of the mice survived for more than a day, and most were paralyzed during that time. One of the main issues is the donor body rejecting their head the way a body might reject any other transplanted organ. Though head transplants are currently science fiction, this probably won't remain the case forever. Scientists, or at the very least scientists, seem hellbent on making this a reality, and no amount of dead mice are going to stand in their way. Should head transplants become a reality, all of the crucial pieces for assembling our monster will be in place except for one small caveat. Remember that decomposition thing we talked about extensively? The funny thing about the body is that the brain decomposes faster than anything else. This is why a person who is revived after as little as three minutes runs the risk of suffering some amount of brain damage. To have a brain be inactive while ten hours of surgery are going on would leave that brain, in no uncertain terms, absolutely f***ed. What this would likely mean is that we not only have to perfect head transplants, but also separate brain transplants. The brain simply couldn't survive the length of all the surgeries taking place, so everything else would have to be accomplished first, and then the brain would be transplanted at the end. This also means that you need to keep a living person outside the operating room until it's just about time to kill them and put their brain in the monster. <laughs> Holy shit. This sounds a little far-fetched, but since the entire experiment was likely predicated on murdering people anyway, we're just gonna roll with it today. <laughs> Unfortunately, a brain transplant is difficult, like prohibitively difficult, to the point of it being likely impossible. For as long as it takes to reattach a limb, there are far more connections that would need to be made during a brain transplant, meaning it would likely take as long, if not longer. There's a huge obstacle in terms of ever transplanting a still-functioning brain, and it's not something that we've really got a solution for yet. It's possible that this step won't be necessary, and science will find a way to perform a head transplant without the brain being damaged in any way. However, it is likely that transplanting a living head onto a living body will be a very different and more plausible scenario than transplanting a dead head onto a dead body. The elephant in the room. So, for the most part, constructing Frankenstein's monster should be possible. Despite the fact it would require carefully coordinating the acquisition of a bunch of body parts that would rather not know how you got, attaching everything together should be possible possible. We need to figure out how to perform successful head transplants, but it's pretty likely that that is going to happen possibly even within our lifetimes. There's still one obvious issue that we haven't addressed, though. Once we've stitched this monster together, 
How exactly are we going to wake it up? A lightning bolt's not going to work, and magic isn't real. So what options does that leave us with? If you think you have the answer to that question, I'm pretty sure there's a Nobel Prize waiting with your name on it, because nobody else has any fucking idea how to reanimate a corpse. More than likely, doing so would be completely impossible. However, even if it is possible, it's almost certain that no one will ever create Frankenstein's monster. After all, why would you? Just to say you can? The amount of effort, coordination, and either coincidence or straight-up murder required to make such a thing possible just isn't worth the trouble. If we ever did achieve this technology, there are plenty of perfectly good corpses to reanimate without having to treat your local morgue like a f***ing builder bear workshop. Alright?